Every man in here is facing something, is warring against something, is battling against something. Chains and shackles fall off my wrist when I begin to praise. Prison doors bust open when I praise. The earth is never more like heaven than when we praise. The Spirit of God is an elevate spirit. Come up, your life is about to come up. I'm gonna get me to the house of God. I'm gonna lean into the Word of God. I'm gonna get some faith on the inside. I'm gonna believe that my God can bring life in death. He can bring life in a valley. Your God doesn't just save you. He saves you and then He heals you and then He delivers you and then He transforms you and then He repairs what is broken and then He brings back what is lost. Your God is an amazing God. The blood of Jesus, there is Hey, so man, I can't encourage you enough. Get registered. Maybe, uh, ladies, you're watching this, but you know a guy who needs to get registered. Point them to www.arise.church. Register today. We're filling up, but I just feel compelled that we're going to do all that we can to make sure we can fit every single one of you in there. We need an impartation from God, and it's going to happen on August 13 at our Man Up conference. I can't wait. Well, as we're uh, going through the book of Romans, today we're in Romans chapter 15. Earlier, uh, the Apostle Paul, what did he instruct us? Don't despise or condemn, all right? So he's talking to believers. Don't despise or condemn people. Don't do that. Don't condemn other believers and, and don't hinder their personal convictions. Everyone has different convictions from the Lord. Your convictions aren't mine. Here's the key. You listen to your convictions. Don't think, well, I feel it's wrong, but they're doing it, so it must be right. No, 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 no. We're going to have different convictions. The key is you follow what the Holy Spirit is instructing you and don't, don't influence others to go against their convictions. All right? Encourage them in that area to obey the voice of God. Convictions might change over time. You just uh, obey whatever season of life you're in. Then he tells us where to follow the example of Christ. If we declare him, we imitate him. So follow God's example, Jesus's example. And today we're in Romans chapter 15, where he says, we who are strong must be considerate of those who are sensitive, we'll come back to that word, about things like this. We must not just please ourselves. So in other words, don't despise people who are sensitive to things. Now, when he talks about the word sensitive, it's infirmities, sicknesses, or, or weaknesses. Don't despise them, but bear with them. Help them. We're to love them. See, as Christians, we're not to, to be self-centered, right? He goes, don't just please yourself. It's not about my life, but to be concerned about the spiritual welfare of others. So the actions I take in my life are the actions that encourage others in their faith. Verse 2 says, we should help others to do what is right and build them up in the Lord, for even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scriptures say, the insults of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. Pleasing others or edifying others. We're not here to please ourselves, but we're here to please God. Even Jesus in John chapter 4, 34 said, Jesus came to do the will of the Father. He lived a life to please God. And that's our life as people who declare Jesus in our life, that we're to please God, to please God. It's so important. And you look at what he says, the insults of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. You know, Psalm 69, verse 9, this is what Paul's referencing, is where the psalmist says, The passion for your house has consumed me, and the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Jesus was insulted because he lived for the Father. And you know, you and I, at moments, we may be insulted, we may be put down, we may be ragged upon because we decide that we're going to live for the Father. Verse 4 says, Such things were written in the Scriptures long ago to teach us. And the Scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's 
promises to be fulfilled. You know, we learn from our past. We're in a series right now called Running with the Giants from an amazing book by John Maxwell. If you missed the series, you can go to our website, check it out. We got all the messages on there. We're looking at the heroes of our faith. Why are we looking back in the Old Testament heroes? Why are we looking at them? Because we're looking at them because now we're learning from them that we can endure. We can be comforted in the present and we can have confidence in the future to know that if God did it then, he can do it also in our lives. And so we look at the scriptures, friends, read the scriptures, be encouraged by the scriptures. Verse five, may God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Jesus Christ, then all of you can join together with one voice giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to see in us a spirit of unity as we follow Christ. Unity, so that with one heart and one mouth and one mind, we glorify and declare Jesus Christ in this world. Unfortunately, uh, unity is not the norm in the church, and most arguments and and most of these, uh, you know, more well-known preachers, most of the hits they take are from other Christians. Think about that. We're to declare Christ, not just to fight or prove others wrong. Declare Jesus. Verse 7, therefore accept each other as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. We accept one. We need to accept one another. You know, Christ accepted us when we were powerless, we were ungodly, we were sinners, and we were enemies, and still he accepted us. And you know, we can receive others, we can receive others, even if we differ on non-essential things. You say, what's non, non-essential? Well, let, let me tell you what's essential, is saved by grace, the virgin birth, the, the one true God, the trinity, Th- those are some of the essential things. We got to be on the same page in in some areas, but you know we can all be a part. There's there's non-essential things that we think. Well, you know I don't know this. Okay, come on, put the non-essentials on the side. Stop arguing. Let's accept that we may interpret different parts of scriptures a little differently. It's not totally clear, and that's okay. We can accept one another instead of fighting against one another. Verse eight says, "Remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews." to show that God is true to the promise he made to their ancestors. A servant to the Jews, he came to the nation of Israel. You know, Jesus' ministry, there are two things. It was to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs. And the second thing was for the, his ministry was to get the Gentiles to glorify God for God's mercy. You know, the covenants that God made were only with the nation of Israel. It was only with the nation of Israel, not the Gentiles. In fact, there was no responsibility to the Gentiles, yet he extended his grace to them. And when I say Gentiles, that's me. I'm a Gentile. He extended his grace to me. The blessings that I receive are solely because of the mercy of God. He made no covenant promises to me. He didn't have to, but he did. And he decided to bless us Gentiles spiritually through the Lord Jesus Christ as and look at this as their Messiah and his covenants with Israel with Jesus being the Messiah of Israel his covenants with Israel he blessed us through that you know the church right now is being formed with Jews and Gentiles and one day Israel will be restored to her place as the head of nations we're going to see God's promises come to pass. We're going to see the ministry of Jesus fulfilled as it is being written right now through the Gentiles and the Jews. And one day the restoration of the nation of Israel. Verse 9, he expounds on this as he says, he also came. This is referencing older verses. He also came so that the Gentiles might give glory to God for his mercies to them. This is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, he being David. David said, for this, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. So what he's saying, I will praise you among the Gentiles. Okay. In with the Gentiles, even with them there, I will give you praise. In another place it's written, this is by Moses. Rejoice with his people, you Gentiles. 
You notice now he's telling the Gentiles to rejoice with God's people. Now, this is from Psalms uh, 117. He says, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Praise him, all you people of the earth. Psalms 117. Instruction. All right. Now it's not even among the, the nation of Israel. You praise him. And then you look at what Isaiah said in verse 12. The heir to David's throne will come and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope on him. It's pretty cool what Paul did here. It was a progression. It started with praise God among the Gentiles. Then it was to rejoice with the Gentiles. Then it was the Gentiles giving praise to the Lord. And then finally, it's the Gentiles living under the rule of the Messiah and placing their hope in him. Isn't that awesome? In verse 13, a benediction, a prayer. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that God will fill your heart. That Paul's prayer right there will be a prayer that's true in your life today. Father, fill our hearts with the power, the confident hope of the Holy Spirit in every single one of us. We thank you again for working and moving in our life. Thank you for your mercy, bestowing your grace upon us. We're so grateful in Jesus' name. God bless you. Remember guys, register, get to our website, our men's conference, our marriage conference. We want you to all be a part of that. We continue to sow into your life. Have a great rest of the day. Hope to see you this weekend at Arise Church. God bless you.